Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. We are recording this particular channeling video with Vincent Price in October of 2021. I thought it'd be a fun way to get into the spirit. After all, you might recognize this mysterious figure, Mr. Price, and his unique and creepy voice. As he said, darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Creatures crawling in search of blood to terrorize your neighborhood. And whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting down should stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. Do you remember where that might be from? Does that sound a little familiar to you? Are you starting to want to dance? Maybe moonwalk, perhaps? Maybe put on that red and black jacket from the video Thriller? I have ulterior motives besides Halloween. Let's talk to Vincent Price and ask him about his work with Michael Jackson on the song Thriller. And let's also ask Vincent Price about Ghosts, creepy stuff in the afterlife, why not? Why not? I'm sure he will be a good spirit, I mean a good sport for us in that regard. So Vincent Price, you feel extremely tall, did I already say that? I have tried to record this video twice before but I was having some trouble with my camera so it was kind of wobbling. Anyway, so I might have already said that. He seems tall to me. I don't know because I don't Google. If you're new to Above Life Channel, here's what you need to know. We don't Google, we don't talk about facts like a journalist would and give you the data and stats about this person's life history because we spend time channeling with spirits to talk about things that we think are interesting like afterlife stuff and how to be a better person based upon what they know because we don't know because we're not dead yet. So, there you go. My point is, I do not know if he is super tall or not, but he feels very tall, okay? So, Mr. Price, it's nice to meet you. He says, oh, and he like literally leans in to like kiss my cheek. It's a little weird to me, but he's like old school, so let's let that, okay, there we go, all right. Yeah, he's a little creepy, creepy a little bit. I hope he's just playing a part. We'll find out, I guess, right? Okay, Mr. Price, let's have a conversation. We would like to know, we would like to know about your work with Michael Jackson. That's where we would like to start because, you know, we're kids of the 80s. Well, I am anyway. And I'd really like to know, did you actually meet Michael? He says, briefly for a time, but it's not what you think. You know, the recording is done in a studio. It's not, it's not quite that, um, that interesting, really. It's just not really that big of a, a thing, um, he says for himself. Um... It is iconic though. Are you surprised by the status? He says, not, not really. He says, if, if you're into that kind of thing, if, you, if that kind of thing matters to you. He says, I have a whole body of work that speaks to my talent as an actor and my vocal experience is what he's saying. Kind of, it's interesting because now I see, like this is creepy. He likes creepy stuff. Like, okay, so in, Human form, you must have liked the creepy stuff, like the nightmarish kind of scary movies. Oh, yes, he says, oh, yes, yes. So you weren't just typecast? Because sometimes that happens to Hollywood, to people, right? And musicians and everything, you get like stuck kind of in like a mold that other people kind of create for you just based on one big role or one big song and like people expect that. Oh, he says, oh, no, he says, I had lots of, he says, I had plenty of opportunities to do other things, to, to break out, he says. He's showing me that he was either on some sitcoms or something, like a guest star, a feature star. And he says, Halloween is my biggest time of year. It's my busiest season. And I'm thinking of like a Santa Claus. <laughs> a Santa, somebody that works as a Santa. It's like their busiest season is Christmas. And for Vincent Price's busiest season was Halloween. It's funny. Um, he says, um, ghost stories and ghost tales are quite fascinating. It's always, It's always been interesting to me, the mis the mysterious things. So are you into or, or, or interested, um, even as a human, like into the paranormal or into like the true crime murder mystery stuff? Because nowadays, here it seems like there's trends and stuff. And right now it seems like all over the place is true crime stuff. Not really my thing, 
because I'm a very um, empathic psychic. And so I feel that as a medium, I feel people's emotions and such. And so that's, that's that heart channel is how I connect. So, so the true crime stuff is really tough for me, but did, so did you like that? Is that an area of interest for you or is it more the paranormal? He says, um, he says, oh, oh, he's kind of like, hmm, that's an interesting question. He says, um, some of the scariest ghost stories are the things that actually happened. But he says, the paranormal and the potential for a good story is far more interesting because it allows for creativity. It allows for the imagination. He's very dramatic, you guys, he's super dramatic. Okay, he's super dramatic. He's like, it allows for the imaginations to step, the imagination to step in and to have its way. And that can bring all sorts of rather fright, frightful components, which, which many people enjoy. And I think, why do you think it is? Why is that, that people enjoy the, the fear part of things, the fright, the scariness, you know, like the haunted houses and the, and the, and the get being scared kind of thing. I think it makes people feel alive, feel more exhilarated, and it's an adrenaline rush when you're scared, when something scares you, you're just, and you're caught off guard, or, or when you're seeking that kind of experience. It says something about you as a person, he says. It says something about you as a person that need to live on the edge. It's more of this um, need for adventure, I think. It's not as much of a, a need to understand death. I don't think that's it. He says, I think it's more of a, a human desire for adventure, to feel a rush without putting yourself in actual danger, but rather using your mind and your imagination and your senses. And he says, your body reacts and responds to, to the, the fear and the, spon the spontaneous surprise of of what um, I want to say creeps you out, but he says what scares you, and that brings you to an edge to give you an experience that feels, it, he's like, he's literally saying it makes you feel more alive. That's kind of fascinating and profound. Did you know this as a human? No, not particularly. He says not particularly, and he's like literally reaching for like some tea or something, and it looks like he also has um, some kind of bottle of like it looks like a maybe a whiskey. It's a dark kind of caramel caramel looking. Um, I'm trying to get a sense of what it is. I don't drink whiskey, so I don't know. It's like caramel looking, and it smells very thick, and it's like thick, and it smells heavy, like masculine, and um, potent. Mm-hmm. Woo. Woo. I think it's whiskey. Hmm. So I see tea and then I see whiskey, like a shot of whiskey, but it's not like, it's a shot, like not in a little shot glass. Like I would think like, oh, a little shot glass. It's like this just wide rimmed glass and it's just like a shot at the bottom of it. It looks like a double actually. Um, it's not nighttime yet, so you maybe want to wait off on that a little bit. It's like lunchtime and he's already having a drink, okay? Um, and he's literally showing me, I don't know why this is coming in. I have no idea, like a John Wayne vibe. I'm getting a John Wayne vibe. I don't know why that is, but I'm getting that. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if he was on a movie set or if he did cowboy kind of um, westerns or that kind of thing, but he's showing me that. And he literally shows me a cowboy hat. So he must have played some kind of bad guy or a cowboy or something earlier on maybe in his career. Um, interesting, like he's sharing stories kind of with me. So he says, um, when you're fortunate to work, he says in Hollywood, he says, you work, you work. And it's something that um, you take work when it's available, he says. So it feels like he has voiceovers and things like that that he's done. It feels like that. I almost feel like radio. Did you try to do radio? And he said, he's showing me like, like a reader's theater kind of a thing, like reading over the radio. Interesting. He's talking to me about his father a little bit. I feel like there's, okay, so this is really personal with his family. Um, I feel like there's alcoholism. I don't know if his dad was an alcoholic or what the deal with that was or if he is, but I feel that. I also feel he has children. Um, and he's saying something about a, a girl or a daughter. There's some kind of a um, acknowledgement of that. Um, a young woman that's like a daughter or a daughter to him. Um, okay, okay. So 
and then I, I'm getting random stuff and I'm not sure what the links are, so I'm just gonna share them. And if you know, put it in the comments below. I see like a cruise ship. So I don't know if there was like some kind of cruise, cruise thing that he performed on or if he was a guest or what the deal with the cruise ship, but I see a cruise ship. And I don't know if that's something significant to him or if it's just private for him that he did run on cruises. I have no idea. I don't know about him like that. So there you go. There's a piece. If you know, please put in the comments below. So, hmm. So talk to me about now that you're an afterlife spirit, thank you for this information kind of about life and, and your life and the, um, some perspectives here. Can you talk to us from as a spirit about ghosts? Talk to us about paranormal stuff and ghosts. Do you, what do you think of the concept of a ghost? Can you describe to us what a ghost is? He said it says something. Ah, very excellent question, my dear. He says, excellent question, my dear. It is something far different than what you in any human mind or brain would consider to be a ghost. The definition, if we would have one that we could come to a mutual agreement upon, it would be something more along the lines of a agree to disagree type of thing. Okay, so what do you mean by that? So when a human person considers a ghost, you think of a person who died and who, is, who, is, um, who stays and is, is missing or lost, have lost, has lost their way and has lost their body and is, is, is maybe tortured or, or seeking something or needing something or unfulfilled or life has not been, been pleasant. And so instead of releasing and going into the afterlife, they would much rather punish themselves and be miserable and suffer in with the rest of the humans by being a ghost, which would mean a spirit or soul without a body, but stuck on this earthly plane. Pretty much? <laughs> Pretty much, yes. And you're telling me that's not necessarily the case. It is not, and you already know this. He's right, because I call them ghosts or earthbound spirits. And I believe that spirits choose to stay for a variety of different reasons. And at any point in time, they can transition or cross over and go to the full on spirit mode where they totally release connection from the human life experience. When they're connected to the human life experience, they feel the pain and trauma. They can feel the pain and trauma um, and confuse that energy because they kind of hold on to the energy of the, the pain body a little bit more so than the happiness body. Like it's not like this happy, joyful thing that they stay necessarily, right? And a lot of times it's this wounding that, that holds them and this need for healing, etc. And just healing just happens with simple acceptance for themselves and, and, and a belief that they're worthy of love. And that's hard to have even in human form, right? Because we know that. You and I know that, right? Yeah, it's hard. So I think... Um, also, though, spirit can also, earthbound spirit, people um, who die can choose to stay. Sometimes there's um, a, someone becomes a guardian of a land or a property or a place, and they, they stay with that, and they become kind of a protector. And so it's not that they have to cross over, like every earthbound spirit, every ghost has to go to the other side. It has, every person who dies has to go. No, they don't have to go. They don't. It's a choice. They do not have to go. And so then what they do with the energy that attach, that they attach to the human experience is, there, is theirs to kind of figure out, which is complicated and creates some struggles. And that's why there's like hauntings and, oh, I just messed up my hair, hauntings and stuff like that. So accurate? Quite. He says quite. But so tell me from the spirit perspective, though, how do you see someone that is an earthbound spirit or a ghost? He says, I see, he says, we understand this as, as you indicated, as a choice that is made. And simply to, most often, he says, um, a very surprised ending when someone dies quite suddenly or rapidly, there can be a, a very um, long period of time before they really come to the conclusion that they are indeed dead and that their life is indeed complete and that they can release from all of the body the energy of the emotions and the relationships and all of the things. There is a fear that when one 
especially if there's a particularly traumatic death, releases from the experience of being a human, they fully release, there can be this, this concern over at the moment of the opportunity to cross into the afterlife, there can be this concern moment, this pause, that creates a resistance and a, a feeling of what would be considered in human context guilt to leave the people behind, the other people, whether it be the other person that they're with at the time of death that survives or the family or their loved ones, etc. work undone or people. It's more about the people, the feeling of the, the relationship with the people, the other humans that causes a pause. And if the pause is taken for too long, it does not allow for a smooth or ready transition into the afterlife. And then there becomes this, this path that this person, former person, must consider and come into contact with some others who will provide opportunities, such as myself and others, who might step in on their behalf, intervene to recommend that they transition. And oftentimes that comes from the form of, yes, loved ones in the afterlife from the other side. And this, it, it simply can be sometimes a timing thing as well and allow for a, just the right moment. And the release from the ego mind is quite a challenge for some. And that process can take, and he's literally showing me like five days to, which is interesting because I often will see spirit and feel spirits closer, like in two places at once, um, like in the afterlife, but also here with their loved ones until the funeral happens. And now that's changed so much with the pandemic. So there's not really ever this clear, how do I leave? I leave and I come and I go and whatever. It's, it's very interesting because I think that from the spiritual perspective, from the soul's perspective, it's hard to know that as a human, when you release into spirit, that you get to actually, you can visit, you can communicate, you can have connection from the frame of reference of your previous lifetime or any other lifetimes if you choose to with either yourself as a higher self reflection of you or as a, um, as the person that, the, the other person that needs the contact most readily uh, remembers you. So you can, spirit can communicate with people in human form, human body. This is me saying this. But it feels like he's, so he's showing this to me. He feels like it's important for me to say that um, that is the biggest challenge and perhaps the reason why many spirit spirits, people who die, choose to delay their full entrance into afterlife and the full releasement into this beautiful like light of spirit love energy because there's not a true understanding in the human mind that you can communicate and connect. This is like telepathy, this is psychic um, um, information, this is clairaudient, clairsentient, this is all of the things, this is what, however the communication would occur. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. So are ghosts bad? He says, it can be bad if it bothers you, yes. If someone is hanging out at your house, is you know hanging around your house, it could be disruptive, yes, because the energy does create a problem because it's not, it's not natural or native for you as a person, as a human, and because people are so sensitive and in tune at this time, it is creating more of a challenge than it has before, and there's misunderstanding. So with so many asking to speak to a spirit guide or have some kind of guidance and, and wisdom from a, a, a spirit, a ghost may become a buffer or interfere with that energy because they too want that guidance, not because they want to torture or punish the human person that they're in the living quarters with. It's not this revenge or anger kind of a thing. It's just simply a state of confusion that happens and the disruption of the timelines and the awareness of the fact that they're actually dead and what that actually means or looks like and how to become more fully spirit is a challenge for many of the ghosts that the people who become ghosts or who stay, not people, souls who become in a ghostly forum. 
it's not ever, he says, it's not ever intended to harm or hurt others, yet just like there are people who are not the best people, there are also ghosts that are also likewise the same tone, if you will, he says. So it's best, he says, to seek advice of a professional if you have challenge with, with challenges with paranormal experiences. And by professional, I don't mean a religious person. I mean someone who understands spirit and spirituality and that can easily or readily access the afterlife to provide opportunity, much like a therapist or counselor would for a person in a human body. This person is simply a soul more than a person, but they are without a body. So that is the difference. So there is a connection to the mind still, in part, yes, because the thought creates the vibration of energy and that most readily resonates to a human. The thought that most closely resonates, it creates an energy. And if that person is having thoughts that are perhaps shared by the ghost or the energy that's around them, it can create some, mm, challenges, but also can create some connection as well. So there are many, many options here. He says many options as far as connection and communication. You could do a whole video on that. He says a whole series on that. All right. Whew, interesting. Okay. So we have been having a conversation with Vincent Price in the afterlife. Kind of feel like I want to put on a red leather jacket with a black stripe in Moonwalk a little? Uh, too much, you guys? Too much? Okay. Hmm. Thank you so much for having conversation with us today. We appreciate it. And thank you for being here. Viewers at Above Life Channel, I hope we've inspired your spirit, at least had a little bit of fun with some of this afterlife stuff. I know it can be really serious, and I don't mean to make light of things that are serious topics. However, I do intend to make serious topics lighter so that you can manage them and understand them with your mind and not be freaked out and scared of things that you don't understand. Just simply recognize that there's not an understanding. That's all there is. It might just be a misunderstanding. And so to learn more about your spiritual connections and, and your intuition, to work with your intuition and understand your energy, that is really what's key here. That's really what's gonna help you. That's really what's gonna make your human life better and help you understand spirit and connect with your spirit guides if you choose to do that in this lifetime as well. All right, so if you're interested in some resources on that, check out my other YouTube channel, Fairy Grasshopper, on YouTube. That's Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. So today, thank you. I hope that we have inspired your spirit today, filled you with hope, and encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.